Keratoconus is a rare disease of unknown origin. It appears to be enhanced by genetic predisposition, an atopic phenotype and by mechanical factors such as excessive rubbing of the eyes. In this corneal dystrophy, gradual thinning and deformation of the stroma occurs with forward bulging of the cornea. Progression is generally asymmetric and unpredictable. The condition begins during adolescence and slows down in the fourth decade of life. On occasion, it may present suddenly following eczema laser photokeratectomy. The resulting irregular astigmatism causes a dramatic drop in visual acuity and the ensuing visual handicap is greater if both eyes are involved. Treatment currently involves adaptation of rigid contact lenses. However, it must be kept in mind that poor adaptation can prematurely increase the severity of keratoconus. If the patient becomes intolerant to the contact lenses, intracorneal rings may be proposed. However, in about 10 to 20 percent of patients, the corneal graft constitutes the only solution. Solution. For more than five years, polymerization of corneal collagen or corneal cross-linking has been evaluated as a new therapeutic alternative. The aim of this procedure is to stabilize or slow down progression of the disease by stiffening the cornea. A photosensitive vitamin, riboflavin, is diffused into the cornea and then excited using a UVA laser. Absorption of photons causes the release of hyperreactive free radicals, resulting in oxidative deamination with instantaneous cross-linking of collagen fibrils. In this way, the first 150 to 200 microns of the anterior corneal stroma may be compacted. In macroscopic terms, this results in improvement of the topography and the flattening of the cornea. The aim of treatment is to attempt to halt the disease. Prior to treatment, thorough exams are performed to assess the severity and progression of the keratoconus. These exams comprise at least the following. Subjective refraction, biomicroscopic examination, topography, ultrasonic central pachymetry, and an endothelial cell count. Additional examinations may be performed such as aberometry, analysis of corneal biomechanics and confocal microscopy. On completion of these examinations, patients may undergo corneal cross-linking if they are presenting demonstrated progressive keratoconus of stages 1 to 3 on the chromite classification with no central opacity and with at least 400 micrometers in the corneal thinnest point. The procedure requires a specific pre-calibrated UVA laser equipped with a visualization screen and a focusing system. The calibration step is essential. Invisible UVA radiation is coupled with red diode laser. The target is positioned in the focal plane of the laser by focusing the two flickering points together into a single point. A power meter is aligned under the laser to measure the targeted fluence which is delivered and must be 3 milliwatts per square centimeter. Under these conditions, studies have shown the procedure to be completely safe for the endothelium, lens and retina. Ultrasound pachymetry is performed to check central corneal thickness. Then surgery is performed with simple topical anesthesia and strict asepsis. During the first stage of the operation, mechanical abrasion of the corneal epithelium is carried out over 8 millimeters in diameter. The next stage involves impregnation of the cornea with riboflavin for 20 minutes with installation of a drop every minute. Bladeless trepanning may be used to ensure greater impregnation through total immersion of the corneal apex. Before the start of the laser, a slit lamp examination must confirm the presence of a bluish flare in the anterior chamber for signaling good impregnation with riboflavin. The third stage of the operation consists of photopolymerization of the central corneal area of 8 millimeters using the UVA laser at a wavelength of 370 nanometers. The riboflavin exhibits green fluorescence under the laser. The patient is aware only of a faint blue light generated by fluorescence of the stromal collagen. This period is divided into six five-minute sessions. 
Between each session, the surgeon checks that the laser is properly focused on the corneal apex. Centering is essential to avoid the irradiation of the limbus. Further installations are performed with isotonic saline solution to rehydrate the surface of the eye and riboflavin to replace the vitamin consumed by the laser. At the end of the irradiation, washing of the eye is performed. Finally, a therapeutic contact lens is applied and remains in place for three days. Post-operative treatment consists of anti-inflammatory and antibiotic eye drops as well as analgesics. A rigorous follow-up program is planned with control visits at 1, 3, 6 and 12 months. The results show a mean decrease in keratometry of 1 to 2 dioptras. Some patients experience an increase in visual acuity. There is generally an improvement in the topographic pattern of corneal ectasia. In clinical terms, stage 1 sub-epithelial haze is generally seen at first. Structural changes can be observed with in vivo confocal microscopy between 1 and 6 months after surgery. Keratocytes gradually disappear from the anterior stroma during the first 3 months and restructuring of the collagen layers occurs. In conclusion, corneal cross-linking by UVA laser associated with riboflavin is a simple and highly codified technique for the treatment of progressive corneal ecstasia. The initial results show satisfactory levels of efficacy and safety, but studies involving longer follow-up are required to confirm long-term efficacy.